Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. In this particular problem, we're going to be finding the powers of imaginary numbers. So we're talking about complex and imaginary numbers. So here is our problem. Now, what I want you to do is to simplify this without using your calculator. Okay, so this is going to be quite different than if you had a nice uh, advanced calculator, something like a graphing calculator. You could just plug this problem in and get the right answer. So put that calculator away and tell me how you would simplify this. Now, I'm going to get into exactly how to solve this problem in just one second. But it is important that you know how to do a problem like this if you're at, like, let's say, the Algebra 2 college algebra or pre-calculus level, right? So some of you out there might be like, well, I'll never see a problem like this. Well, yes, you will if you're dealing with complex and imaginary numbers, which all of you will uh, when you get to this level of mathematics. You're going to have to be able to do the things I'm going to show you here in just one moment. Okay, so if you can figure this problem out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the answer in just one second, and then, of course, I'm going to fully explain how to simplify this particular problem. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so we have 6i six, uh, uh, six to the 900th power plus 3i to the 897th power minus 5i to the 742nd power. Of course, these exponents here are rather intimidating. So what is the answer? Well, let's go and take a look at it right now. The answer is 11 plus uh, 3i. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, that's very, very good. Matter of fact, certainly going to give you a nice little happy face and A++, a 110% and multiple stars. So you could tell your friends and family that you know how exactly uh, how to uh, evaluate uh, powers of complex and imaginary numbers. Okay, let's review something here real quick. Uh, just for those of you out there, I'm using this co uh, complex and imaginary numbers. Now, what is a complex and imaginary number? Now, let's just review uh, the real number system, okay? So the real number system is simply the number line that we're kind of all used to. We start learning this way back in elementary school. So here's zero, here's one, here's two. And then eventually we learn about uh, positive and negative numbers, uh, all the integers, et cetera, all the numbers that you can plot on this number line is a set of real numbers. Now, the complex number system, the real number system, is a subset of the complex number system. And complex numbers are um, constructed in the form A plus BI, okay, where A is the real component. So in this particular uh, number right here, this is a complex number. This is the real component. And this BI is the imaginary component. Okay, so just to be clear about this, um, about some of the terms I'm using, complex and imaginary numbers, if you just have uh, like I by itself, that's an imaginary number, but really it's part of a uh, comp the complex number system, right? So even if I had the number, the imaginary number 4I, if I wanted to express that as a full complex number, that's really 0 plus 4I, where 0 would in fact be the real component to that complex number. Okay, so just stuff that you should know if you're looking at this video. Now, again, I was uh, saying that if you're at this level of math, and I'm talking about anything uh, beyond your first year algebra uh, you know, level, you're going to be working with complex numbers, and this is a type of problem that you're going to know how to kind of deal with. All right, so what are, we, uh, what are we going to need to know to solve this problem? Well, the first thing that we're going to need to know is we're going to need to know some basic powers of I, okay? Now, if you're kind of lost already on complex and imaginary numbers and all this kind of stuff, let me go ahead and just direct you to like my Algebra 2 or my pre-calculus course, right? You'll learn more than you'll um, need to know. Well, now I would say more than you need to know. If you truly want to master this stuff, let me just say that, go to those courses, okay? But here I'm just kind of doing a quick review of some things that you should know at this level. All right, so the first is I, okay? I by itself, it by definition, is equal to the square root of negative 1, 
All right, so hopefully all of you out there know that. Now, let's take a look at I squared. Okay, so if I have I and I square it, let's square both sides of I, I'm gonna have I squared. So what's gonna happen to the square root of negative one? Well, the square root's gonna go away, so we're just left with negative one. Okay, so I squared is equal to uh, negative one. Right, I just showed you exactly how we got there. All right, how about I cubed? Well, I cubed, uh, we're gonna have to use a little bit of uh, algebra or uh, knowledge of powers and exponents. So I'm gonna think of I cubed as uh, I squared times I. Okay, that's the same thing as I cubed. Now, why would I do such a thing? Well, because I already know what I squared is, right? So I squared is negative one. So this is negative one times I, okay? So I cubed is the same thing as negative I. All right, how about I to the fourth? Well, I to the fourth, I can think of as I squared times I squared. And what's I squared? That is nothing more than negative one. So this is negative one times negative one, which of course is positive one. Now we could continue on this way. Now, are we gonna continue on this way until we reach these exponents? No, that would be very painful and arduous and no one expects you to do that. So we're gonna to have to uh, kind of use some mathematical trickery to figure this problem out, all right? But again, the first thing we need to know are these various powers of i. Then we need to kind of uh, drill in and take a look at these exponents. We're like, all right, we gotta get creative here. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm looking at the problem. I'm like, okay, uh, 900, this exponent, that's even. 897, that's odd. And then 742 is even. Now, why, why am I thinking those terms? Well, because I'm thinking that if I can rewrite 900 uh, uh, with two, okay, with a factor of two, in other words, I can write it in terms of uh, uh, power of I squared to a certain power. Matter of fact, let me just show you because it's easier for me to show you than to try to explain it. So I'm thinking, well, look, isn't uh, I to the 900th power the same thing as I squared all this to the 450? Because I know this is even, so I could divide it by two. I'm interested in two because I know I squared. I already know what the value of I squared is. It's negative one. So I'm like, you know, I want to change out some of these i's for actual values. So whether it be one or negative one. So I know the value of i squared, it's negative one. Okay, so this right here is going to uh, turn out to be nothing but negative one to the 450th uh, yeah, power. And I'll show you how to deal with that in a second. But I'm going to write these even exponents in terms of uh, i squared to some other power. Okay, so you can see 742 is the same thing as 371 times 2. So this exponent here can write as i squared to the 371st power. Now, 897, that's an odd um, uh, exponent, right? So here I'm thinking, well, I can't really use the i squared, but I do know it's i cubed to 299, okay? Now, we'll come back to this part here in a second, but these we definitely know because i squared is what? Well, again, i squared is equal to negative 1. Okay, so let's go and take the next step here, okay? So I'm like, all right, i squared is equal to negative one. What do I do with that? Well, let's plug out or let's exchange all these i squareds for negative ones. Okay, so i squared, negative one. And then as i cubed to the 299, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna uh, distribute this 299 to that third uh, power. And we'll write it as 897 because we're gonna have to deal with this uh, in a different way and I'll show you uh, what I mean here in a second. So let's just focus on this part of the problem right now. Okay, so here I have negative one to the 450 power and negative one to the 371st power. So now what do we need to do? Well, this is the next part of the problem. So really there's like three, well, there's actually multiple things you need to know, but to when you're dealing with powers of I, Okay, one, you need to know uh, the different basic powers of I, which I just showed you in the beginning of this video. The second thing you need to do is manipulate your larger exponents just like I did right here. And then the third thing is once you can change out some of these I squareds for negative one, then we can take a look at patterns of negative one. Okay, so for example, negative one times negative one, that's the same thing as negative one squared. Okay, so we could just see here 
that any um, uh, even power, okay, even exponent of negative one is going, is going to be po a positive one, right? So negative one square, negative one to the fourth, you know, anytime you multiply negative one by itself an even amount of times, the answer is positive one. So negative one times itself an odd amount of times, it's going to be negative one, right? Negative one times negative one times a negative one will be a negative one. If I added one more negative one, I'd have four negative ones, which would be even. So this is all we need to know. We just need to know this basic uh, pattern here. Okay, so then I could figure this stuff out right here because this is negative one to an even power and this is negative one to an odd power. So let's go ahead and use this knowledge right now to change out uh, to figure out what these powers of negative one are. So negative one to the 450th power is a positive one. Okay, why is that positive? Again, 450 is positive. I'm sorry, even, excuse me, it's an even number. So we're gonna end up with a positive number. And then here, okay, this 371 is what? Well, that's odd, okay, it's an odd number. So, so you're taking negative one to an odd power. So that's going to end up being negative one. Okay, so I know that's a little bit confusing. So, you know, again, what you want to do is just pause this video, think about it, and step by step, that's the beauty of being able to watch a video. You can control what's going on. All right, so now we're down to just six times one over here, and this is negative five times negative one. So let's take care of this part of the problem. And here we'll get six, and here we'll get positive five. So now we have this problem down to 11 plus th uh, 3i to the 897th power. Okay, so we're looking pretty good, but we're not done yet. All right, so uh, here we couldn't really manipulate this because we didn't have an even exponent. But let's break up this uh, larger exponent such that we have the, uh, the majority of this power um, as an even power. So what do I mean by that? Well, I can write uh, uh, i to the 897 as i to the 896 times i, or i to the first, right? So the same base, and I can add the exponent, so this is equivalent. Now here, again, you need to be strong with your algebra skills. Notice I kind of factored out three. I'm keeping my powers uh, within this parenthesis, okay? So I don't uh, get confused with anything. So again, you know, at this level of mathematics, all those things that you should have learned way back in pre-algebra, algebra, algebra one, you know, all this stuff counts, okay? Math builds upon itself, and the way you write all this stuff really makes a big difference. Okay, now why did I do that? Well, because, uh, why did I kind of break this up? Because now 896, I'm thinking, oh, this is even. I can use that same little trick that I used on those previous exponents. So now I'm gonna think of uh, 896, I'll divide that by two. So that's 448. So 448 times two is 896, and I can write uh, i to the 896 as i squared, all that to the 448, all right? So you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, and I know it's confusing, but again, you know, with this level of mathematics, you just have to stay highly focused. So again, I can change out this i squared for a negative one, and this is gonna be multiplied by i. Easy to make a mistake here. So again, just keep writing things one step at a time. Okay, so this is i squared. What's i squared? Well, i squared, again, is negative 1. So let's plug in a negative 1 right there. And there you go. There's a negative 1. So we have 11 plus 3, all this negative 1 to the 448 times i. Okay, so now we have negative 1 to an even power. All right, so what's that going to be? Well, let's go down and remember our little pattern here. When we have negative 1 to an even power, the an uh, final answer is a positive 1. So all of this is going to be nothing more than a positive one. Okay, so let's just change all this out right here. Negative one uh, to the 448 will be a positive one. So there you go. So now we have three times, all this is gonna be a positive one times i, okay? So now remember this is all multiplication, so three times one times i, all this will be three i, and our final answer is 11 plus three i. Okay, so what'd you think of this problem? Okay, did you think it was like, wow, this is, 
this is just a, like a bunch of nonsense. I'll just get my calculator out. I'm not going to deal with this. Well, listen, I kind of get that. But if you're at this level of math, you're at this level of math for a reason. Okay, no one's taking, you know, pre-calculus unless you, unless you have a reason to. Okay, if you're trying to go to college or maybe you're in college, maybe you want to be an engineer. Certainly, if you're going to be doing anything that involves more advanced mathematics, you need to learn, uh, you know, well, let me just suggest that your attitude be one of curiosity and be like, wow, you know, it was difficult, but I learned something. I feel better. It's, uh, it's uh, basically like working out at the gym, right? Sometimes you don't want to do things and you work out, maybe you lift weights, you go running, you know, at the time you're kind of feeling this pain, but afterwards you feel so great. Same thing with doing a problem like this. Okay, so again, if you need help with this level of mathematics, I'll suggest either my Algebra 2 or Pre-Calculus course. But if this little video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.